Nobody has mentioned a word about this yet. That on page 186 to 190 in the Horowitz report, it describes in great detail how the FBI found out that the subsource for the Steele dossier disavowed it, and they used it two more times to get warrants. They never told the court, and they actually lied to the court about the interview. If that doesn't bother you, you hate Trump way too much. They just want an outcome. It doesn't matter how you get Trump. It doesn't matter if you trick the FISA court. It doesn't matter if you infiltrate the campaign. The goal is to stop Trump and the rules don't matter. This is a very dangerous time in American history where the media and the Democratic Party wants an outcome against Trump, no matter what the rules are. The president had some pretty strong words late Friday when he was asked about people defying subpoenas to testify in front of the January 6th Select Committee. The president told reporters he hopes the committee goes after people like former Trump advisor Steve Bannon, stressing they should be held accountable in his words. Hunter has defied, meanwhile, a Republican subpoena to give closed-door testimony over his dubious business dealings. And, and we just saw President Biden, and I asked him what his message is to those who defy these congressional subpoenas. Subpoenas. And he said, Wolf, that he hopes the January 6th Select Committee goes after them and holds them accountable. Hunter Biden made a surprise appearance outside Congress today, defying a subpoena to testify at a closed-door committee hearing. I asked if that means having the Justice Department prosecute those who defy these January 6th subpoenas, and he said, yes, I do agree that that is what should happen here. I hope that the committee goes after them and uh, holds them accountable. Should they be prosecuted by the I, Justice Department? I do, Department? yes. It seems highly <laughs> unlikely that these Republicans are going to comply with their subpoenas. Enforce the subpoenas. Uh, have the marshals go pull them out of, out of their homes, out of their offices, and bring their behinds before the committee. Enforce the subpoena. After the 2016 election, during the presidential transition, I spoke with a number of outgoing Obama administration officials. Um, the worst case scenario that the country should prepare for. The answer that I got was that the worst case scenario they could imagine was that the president, the incoming president, Donald Trump, would use the Justice Department as a weapon. That the president is now urging the Department of Justice to investigate his political opponent, Hillary Clinton. And that's really the essence of abuse of power. Congressman Adam Schiff. And Jerry Nadler saying in a joint statement, The Department of Justice under A.G. Barr has lost its independence and become a vehicle for President Trump's political revenge. Well, I think Bill Barr has gone beyond um, politicizing the Justice Department. I think he's weaponized the Justice Department. Uh, he has clearly put the Justice Department on the side of this president. And I've never seen anything so brazen as what the president and Attorney General Barr are trying to do and doing on a daily basis. The media screamed and so many of you echoed, Trump is trying to normalize corruption. No, he isn't. I argue Trump absolutely thinks corruption is already normal. President Donald Trump has been indicted hmm. by a grand jury in New York. Trump was under investigation by the DA's office for his alleged hush money payment to adult film star Stormy Daniels during the 2016 campaign. This moment at 1.24 p.m. Eastern time, Donald J. Trump is under arrest. I've never been more angry about a charge because today, the rule of law in the United States of America died. It's dead. It's dead. It feels good, but remember, he is innocent until proven so, so guilty. <laughs> Today's proof that you could actually pick a target and then try and find a crime, even a crime that's not a crime, because there is no crime here. And I'm telling you, there is no crime. I know the facts. I know the law. This has been the most, the greatest abuse of power I have ever seen at the hands of this president who has no, no sense of decency or understanding of the Constitution. It's a presidency of firsts. He was the first president to be impeached twice. He was the first president to have his home raided by the FBI. And now he's the first president to be indicted. While in court, the former president was officially charged with 34 felony counts of falsifying business records, all of which were classified as Class E felonies. Well, leave it to the man with the golden toilet. Even his felonies are Class E.
You sound like a bitch, nigga. Breaking 250 years of American tradition, indicting a former president, and then potentially losing a very public and thus embarrassing trial. The defendant, Donald J. Trump, repeatedly and fraudulently falsified New York business records to conceal criminal conduct that hid damaging information from the voting public during the 2016 presidential election. Concealing damaging information from the voting public? Where have I heard that before? Oh, well, that's exactly what Team Biden did with the laptop. No president, no president, no president has ever intimidated a general, attorney general into abusing power as much as this man has. It's I... disgusting. We just have to demonstrate that he will not take power uh, by, uh, if, we, uh, if he does run, uh, making sure he, uh, under the legitimate efforts of uh, our Constitution, does not become the next president again. It's I... disgusting. Even Democrats who hate Donald Trump don't fully support this indictment. He can't allege that Trump kept information from the public because it's legal to keep information from the public. So he's got to say he tried to influence the election by these false book entries. But the problem is the election was over for four months before <laughs> the book entry started. We have the dumbest district attorney in the country booting a case against the former president. I got it. This is an abuse of power that the president is again trying to manipulate federal law enforcement to serve his political interest. He thinks he's above the law. He has no respect for the rule. But where are the Republicans to speak out on this blatant violation of the rule of law? Ever since he rode down the golden escalator, Democrats have wanted nothing more than to get Mr. Trump. We had the grabber by the you-know-what tape, Russian collusion, the Steele dossier, impeachment one, impeachment two, a dozen other smaller scandals in between. Nothing worked. Our, I, I really believe, Nicole, our democracy is at risk. Mm -hmm. Four more years of this guy, our democracy is at risk. It's the greatest abuse of power we have ever, ever seen. And the Democrats have really crossed the Rubicon here. I don't know how you come back from this as a country when you are coming up with these bogus, trumped-up charges to go after your political enemies. This is part of a pattern by the Democrats going back five years, six years, since even before Trump was the president, they've gone after him constantly. They know these charges are bogus. And Nancy Pelosi, for that matter, is someone that cares nothing for the law. She says Trump is guilty until proven innocent. She tweeted, quote, the grand jury has acted upon the facts and the law. No one is above the law, and everyone has a right to a trial to prove innocence. To prove innocence, flipping the American standard of justice on its head. A country where you are innocent until proven guilty, turned when it comes to Donald Trump by Nancy Pelosi. Justice Department has this, uh, should have this R of something so apolitical, so above the political fray, that people have confidence in the rule of law in our country. What about the Pelosi's? Why don't you prove you're not insider trading, Nancy? Democrats know you get one shot, one shot to indict Trump. You know the saying, if you're going to shoot the king, you have to kill him. An acquittal simply emboldens Donald Trump and discredits the Georgia investigation and the Department of Justice special counsel investigation. And these aren't even the biggest charges coming. The big ones are being investigated by special counsel Jack Smith. It's every single indictment has been approved by the Attorney General of the United States, every single one of them. This special counsel was picked because he was close to Eric Holder, he was close to Jim Comey, he was close to Andrew Weissman. All they did is they took the worst actors under the Obama-Biden-Holder administration. He brought in his old chums from the public integrity section. And Jack Smith was head of this public integrity section with the Department of Justice for about four and a half years during the Obama-Biden administration. Why uh, Jack Smith turned such a blind eye, ignored what was happening, not right under his nose in Washington, D.C., but headlines that were blaring throughout the summer of 2014 about Hunter Biden's appointment to the Burisma board. But, you know, again, that was Nazi Germany. That was Soviet Union. That was communist China, where you pick the target, the person you don't like, the political opponent, and then you find the crime. It never was that way in the United States of America. It's not supposed to be that way. And when we start doing that, 
we're no better than those other dictatorships and governments that, that abuse rule of law. Would it be your mindset to investigate this president? Congress hasn't really been able to get very far, but would you direct your DOJ to examine either the Trump organization enriching themselves, or would it be your instinct to try to turn the page? Whomever my attorney general was, they go back and scrub all of the mistakes and all the excesses of this administration. This is not the president's personal lawyer, period. Vindictiveness is not his to possess. We have the bank records, subpoenaed bank records, where Joe Biden, his family has taken a million dollars from the CCP, and they're, they're not going to do anything about this. A, a president who's compromised by China and Ukraine, but they're going to go after a former president and potentially a future president because he settled a nuisance claim with Stormy Daniels back in 2016. Somehow this is a federal felony under under our campaign finance laws. This is who are they, who's Alvin Bragg going to bring into this trial? They're going to bring in a disbarred felon of an attorney and a former stripper as their star witnesses here. This is banana republic level stuff. And maybe that's what the, today's Democrats want. These leftists want. They're trying to destroy our country and they're they are well on their way. Well, on Christmas Day, a 77 year old criminal defendant facing racketeering charges and other felonies in four jurisdictions said that his prosecutors should rot in hell. And unlike every other criminal defendant who has said that, he didn't mumble it to himself bitterly. He said it through the reach of social media to the world. Trump won and you know